guys in today's lecture we'll be dealing with the fortis poets the fortis poets as the name itself indicates are a group of poets who wrote poetry in the decade immediately preceding the 30s poets so the decade that came after the 30s poets were mo was more or less ruled by the 40s poets moving on to the background the breaking up of orden group in 1939 marked the end of poetry of social and political concern so in the previous lecture i discussed that in the later themes of the poets of the 30s there arose a sudden shift from the exploration of the external political reality to the exploration of the inner world so that was a sudden shift that happened to the 30s poets mainly because they got disillusioned with the ideas such as communism so they slowly moved from writing poetry uh, with political concern to inner explorations of the mind similarly the 40s poets too focused on the inner reality or the inner world of mind a group of younger poets came into prominence in the early 1940s they turned away from the treatment of the world without to an exploration of the world within so here the world without is a reference to the uh, social and political poetry that was there in the 1930s the poetry of the 1930s was largely based on political commentaries so the treatment of the poetry of the 1930s was on a world without so from a treatment of the world without the 40s poets focused on an exploration of the world within they wrote pure poetry instead of social and political poetry now you might be wondering what do you mean by pure poetry is there anything as impure poetry now it's not like that even in dance or in literature or in art when you focus more on the form rather than on the content when you focus on the form rather than on the contemporary situation then you are focusing purely on uh, the genre which means you are giving more importance to the genre and hence it becomes pure that is why there are different forms of dance you know there is uh, bharatanatyam the classical art forms and then there is a cinematic dance a person following the classical dance form is considered to be a purist in dance and he won't accept a cinematic dancer so there will be a reluctance from his part in accepting the contemporary dancers or cinematic dancers they are also experimenting with dance forms but they are deviating a lot from the traditional norms similarly the 30s poets when they focused more on the content they gave less importance to the form they wrote in blank verse sorry they wrote in free verse remember they wrote in free verse and they used jazzy rhythms which was unlike any other poetry which existed before them so the poetry of the 30s wo- was written as a rebellion against all the political conventions that were there uh, until up until that time so the poetry of the 1940s came as a reaction against the social and political poetry of the 1930s hence they focused purely on the form hence they fo- wrote pure poetry instead of social and political poetry i think that i made myself clear these poets constituted a school called surrealism they were also a group of poets who wrote surrealist poetry containing surrealist imagery they were poets of image rather than statement surrealism as a movement came in the 1920s and it first showed its influence in art in arts there were surrealist painters and it came along with dadaism 
or you can say that Dadaism influenced uh, painters and sculptors into surrealism. So, even in surrealist poetry, the focus was on the image and the imagery that they used rather than on making a political statement. So, rather than on making a political statement, they focused on the form, they focused on the image. They were influenced by the French surrealist movements of the 1920s. Another important point is that the surrealists were influenced by the French surrealist movements of the 1920s. See, the surrealists or the surrealist movements in France came into being in the 1920s. It expressed itself in arts first, in painting and in sculpture. And in the 1940s, it found its expression in the poetry of Britain, in the British poetry. So, they were influenced by the surrealist movements of the 1920s. So, from 1920s, two decades after, they found an expression in poetry. Surrealism found an expression in poetry. Moving on to the major poets of the 1940s, the three major poets of the 1940s are George Barker, Dylan Thomas and David Gascoigne. Among them, Dylan Thomas is the most important poet of the 1940s. He is the most prominent and prolific poet of the 1940s. Now, you might be wondering why I gave their paintings as well as their pictures. See, the, there is a reason behind it. Because I said that surrealism was closely connected with paintings. And two of these portraits was made by a famous painter who lived in London in the 1960s and in the 1950s. His name was Patrick Swift and he was known by the name Poets Painter because he was, he, or, uh, he was a close friend of George Barker and David Gascoigne. He had close relationship with these two poets, George Barker and David Gascoigne and he made these two paintings and this comes under his series of paintings called London Portraits. That's why I thought that I will be giving you these images as well. So see, surrealism as a movement is deeply interconnected with art as well as literature because it has its origins in art. Though these are, cannot be considered as surrealist paintings because these are basically portraits, but still it has an art, it has got an artistic connection to it. Now this famous portrait was made by an artist called Alfred James. So these are the major poets of the 1940s. George Barker, who was born in 1913 and he died in 1991. Dylan Thomas, born in 1914, died in 1953. And David Gascoigne, born in 1916 and died in 2001. So, all these poets, we can say that they uh, were born somewhere at the beginning of the First World War and they uh, lived to see the Second World War and after. Now, the famous poet and critic Cecil D. Lewis famously remarked that the poetry written by the poets of the 40s was marked by a return to the ideals of poetic integrity and artistic individualism, a setting out against the direction of pure poetry. So these poets focused on the ideals of poetic integrity and artistic individualism. So just before them, the poets wrote on social reality. Their themes were more or less based on social reality and the pressing political issues of the times, but the poetry of the 1940s focused more on poetic integrity. They focused more on form. They focused on poetic integrity and artistic individualism. Each artist, each, each poet should create a new artwork, should create a new piece of art or work of art and it should carry within it an individual element, an idiosyncratic element which is 
there or which can be considered as a unique characteristic feature of his poetry alone individualism should be there uru artist eduna workina ayalde thattulloru kaiyoppu venam uru പോയറ്റ് എഴുതുന്ന വർക്കിൽ അയാളുടേതായിട്ടുള്ളൊരു കയ്യൊപ്പ് വേണം അതിനെയാണ് നമ്മൾ ആർട്ടിസ്റ്റിക് ഇൻഡിവിജ്വാലിസം എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ആൻഡ് ദേ ഷുഡ് ബി എ പോയറ്റിക് ഇൻറ്റഗ്രിറ്റി ആസ് വെൽ സോ ദ പോയറ്ററി വാസ് മാർക്ക്ഡ് ബൈ റിട്ടേൺ ടു ദി ഐഡിയൽസ് ഓഫ് പോയറ്റിക് ഇൻറ്റഗ്രിറ്റി ആൻഡ് ആർട്ടിസ്റ്റിക് ഇൻഡിവിജ്വാലിസം എ സെറ്റിംഗ് ഔട്ട് എഗെയിൻസ്റ്റ് ദ ഡയറക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് പ്യുവർ പോയറ്ററി സോ ദേ വെയർ സെറ്റ് ഔട്ട് ടു റൈറ്റ് പ്യുവർ പോയറ്ററി എ സെറ്റിംഗ് ഔട്ട് എഗെയിൻസ്റ്റ് ദ ഡയറക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് പ്യുവർ പോയറ്ററി they wanted to write pure poetry now surrealism as a movement originated in france in the 1920s it was a development of dadaism it came as a development of dadaism dadaism tinte or kai vali aitana surrealism or movement aite munnotu vannathu surrealists attempt to express art and literature the workings of the unconscious mind and to synthesize these right workings with the conscious mind sorry the surrealists attempt to express in art and in literature the workings of the unconscious mind and to synthesize these workings with the conscious mind so surrealist wanted to express in art as well as in literature the workings of the unconscious mind unconscious mind ile workings engine ekke irikkum unconscious mind il undayirikkina repressions unconscious mind il undayirikkina desires unconscious mind il undayirikkina fears phobias idinte ekke or expression ayirunu surrealist poetry il namukku kaanan kazhinjathu allengil surrealist paintings il namukku kaanan kazhinjathu so the surrealists attempted to express in art and literature the workings of the unconscious mind and to synthesize this workings with the conscious mind and they wanted to synthesize this workings see if you write if each and everything that comes in your unconscious mind it would be an incoherent babble so they wanted to synthesize it with the working of conscious mind as well they wanted to find a synthesis between the conscious and the unconscious mind and they tried to express it like that the surrealist allows his work to develop non logically rather illogically so that the result represents the logic of the unconscious so again they wanted to express everything that com- comes into their mind in a non logical manner they wanted to express everything illogically you know when you read their poetry we we feel like this is a completely illogical you cannot think about such situations you cannot think about uh, such illogical themes how do they come up with it do they dream about it and then they write about it so what is happening here surrealist allows his work to develop non logically so they purposefully uh, writes illogically so that the result represents the logic of the unconscious they wanted to represent the logic of the unconscious and Unco- they wanted to represent the inner workings of the unconscious mind unconscious mind il endalla nadakkunu adu as such uh, they wanted to portray it in their poetry in england surrealism came in the wake of economic crisis and unemployment in the 1931 now you might be wondering why did surrealism come into being or what was the impetus for surrealism what uh, was the reason behind poets writing in a surrealist manner the reason was that in england surrealism came in the wake of economic crisis in in the wake of the great economic depression and the unemployment which followed in the 1931 people wanted to flee from the uh, realities they wanted to flee from the social realities they wanted to take refuge from the harsh realities that they had to face and they found that their refuge in surrealism so it implied the treatment of subconscious as more real and significant than the conscious so they wanted to fly away or they wanted to seek a refuge from the consciousness they wanted to seek a refuge from the conscious mind so it implied a treatment of the subconscious as more real and significant than the conscious so 
they wanted to treat the subconscious uh, or the subconscious memories as more real and significant than the conscious they wanted to say that the subconscious memories that are there the memories that are there in the subconscious mind of a happy childhood they are more significant than the consciousness than the reality than the harsh reality that they were facing in the 1930s and the years that followed the great economic depression now you might be confused about what is conscious what is subconscious what is unconscious so i thought that i will be uh, giving you this iceberg analogy you'll learn about it in detail in your theory classes but i thought that i'll just introduce this iceberg analogy so that you would know what a subconscious is what an unconscious is and what a conscious is so you you have i think that you are all familiar with an iceberg So it is said that you will only see half of an iceberg on the surface. The entirety of the iceberg is submerged somewhere beneath it. निंगलो iceberg का कारण बो, अदिन्दे मुगल भाग का मात्रा में निंगल कारण नलो, अदिन्दे एक entirety न बरी न द, it is submerged beneath it, right? So uh, likewise, when you see a person for the first time, you meet him as a persona. or our persona is like an iceberg we have a conscious level in which we have our thoughts and perceptions will be expressing our thoughts and perceptions and the world will be judging us based on our thoughts and perceptions nammude chindagal chindagadigal idineyana thoughts and perceptions nu parayunathu idaani nammude out ഔട്ട്സൈഡിൽ നമ്മൾ കാണിക്കുന്ന അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഔട്ട്സൈഡിൽ നമുക്കറിയാൻ പറ്റുന്ന നമ്മൾ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഈ കോൺഷ്യസ് ലെവലിലുള്ള തോട്ട്സ് ആൻഡ് പെർസെപ്ഷൻസ് ആണ് ഇത് പുറമെയുള്ളവർക്ക് തോട്ട്സ് ആൻഡ് പെർസെപ്ഷൻസ് ആയിട്ട് തോന്നാം നമ്മുടെ ചിന്തകൾ ചിന്താഗതികൾ നമുക്കാണെങ്കിൽ ഒരു കോൺഷ്യസ് അവയർനെസ് ആണ് അബൌട്ട് ആർ സെൽഫ് വി ആർ അവെയർ ഓഫ് ആർ സെൽഫ്സ് റൈറ്റ് വി നോ ദാറ്റ് വി വോണ്ട് ഡു സെർട്ടൻ തിങ്സ് ആൻഡ് വി നോ ആർ സെൽഫ്സ് ബെറ്റർ സൊ ദിസ് കോൺഷ്യസ് അവെയർനെസ് എക്സിസ്റ്റ് ഇൻ ദി ഔട്ടർ മൂസ്ഡ് ലെവൽ വിച്ച് ഇസ് കോൾ ദ കോൺഷ്യസ്നെസ് വെയർ യു ആർ അവെയർ ഓഫ് ദ വേൾഡ് വിച്ച് ഇസ് ഔട്ട്സൈഡ് യു ആർ അവെയർ ഓഫ് യുവർ സെൽഫ് യു വോണ്ട് കൺഫ്യൂസ് ദ റിയാലിറ്റി വിത്ത് എനിത്തിങ് എൽസ് Um, you won't confuse reality uh, with dreams uh, you know what your reality is and everything exists in the conscious level now the second level is the preconscious or the subconscious level manasinde randamathe level aanu preconscious allengil subconscious level nu parayunathu here uh, there are memories and stored knowledge in the Uh, pre-conscious or subconscious level in our pre-conscious or subconscious level we have memories and stored knowledge memories good memories memories of our childhood and the stored knowledge whatever that you learn in uh, in your classes whatever that you are able to retain everything is there in the subconscious mind uh, the shared knowledge that you have about people as such in material petitola impressions so all our subconscious mind la nalladu memories and stored knowledge exist in the subconscious mind now in the unconscious level which is you know beneath it see the depth increases in the unconscious level also uh, like in the case of an iceberg the depth increases the immensity of the iceberg increases in the unconscious level here we store our fears Uh, phobias the fears that we have if you have a fear of heights or acrophobia that is stored in the unconscious level each and every time you come up uh, closer to a cliff you will feel that fear you will feel a fear when you uh, see a spider you know uh, then uh, you know arachnophobia uh, all those phobias and fears are there which uh, are stored in the unconscious level your phobias your worst fears are stored in the unconscious level your hidden feelings feelings that you have towards others your thoughts inner thoughts urges and memories uh, Uh, memories here refers to unacceptable or unpleasant memories that you may have uh, you know even in your childhood or even in your adulthood if you uh, come across unacceptable or unpleasant memories memories that you won't wish to remember like the death of a relative or the loss of 
a person near to you then those are all unpleasant and un unacceptable memories right all these memories uh, are there in the unconscious level it exists in the unconscious level uh, and such feelings of pain anxiety or conflict also exist in the unconscious level feelings of pain uh, anxiety or conflict exist in the unconscious level so unconscious level on a feeling of pain anxiety etc existing you know, that is why a uh, when you know exams near closer or when you are anxious you won't be able to speak because of because the unconscious is taking control over the conscious level so at times the unconscious level can take control over the conscious level it can go beyond the subconscious level and it can take the control of the conscious level so unconscious is a very uh, you know very dangerous territory and you need to tread very uh, uh, cleverly in that territory whenever you are treading closer to unconscious you need to be very careful you you should not be you know caught in the unconscious level for long then you won't be able to reach the conscious level so un in the unconscious level we store our fears phobias feelings thoughts urges memories unacceptable or uh, unpleasant memories and feelings of pain anxiety or conflict now uh, even below the unconscious level there is something called collective unconscious see even below the unconscious level there is something called collective unconscious which was a term coined by psychologist carl jung so psych conscious preconscious and unconscious levels uh, it was freud who proposed all the three levels but carl jung proposed collective unconscious now what do you mean by collective unconscious these are the primal instincts and the primal drives that we have so when you see a snake you immediately feel frightened uh, that's not because um, you know you because of the snake or because of your fear towards snake it is basically because our ancestors or our primitive ancestors who used to live in jungles they feared snakes uh, similarly uh, when you go to a forest or when you are trapped in a forest um, you feel fear or uh, when you see a wild animal you feel fear and that's because our ancestors had to fight with all those wild animals in the wild and it registered itself in our unconscious long ago and that is there that is why we feel fear when we um, come across a wild animal or when we come across a snake we instantly feels a fear so that is uh, the collective unconscious that is something called the collective unconscious you can uh, deal about it in detail in your theory classes uh, in the upcoming semesters i just wanted to introduce these three concepts the conscious level where the, uh, where resides your thoughts and perceptions about the outside world and you are aware of it in the preconscious level resides your memories and stored knowledge on the unconscious level uh, resides all your fears phobias feelings thoughts urges memories unacceptable and uh, unpleasant memories and feelings of pain anxiety and conflict so these are the three levels that you need to learn uh, in order to understand surrealist poetry now before moving on to surrealism as such i thought that i would discuss this as well so these concepts of preconscious uh, subconscious conscious preconscious subconscious and unconscious has its roots in india so even before uh, sigmund freud came up with this idea or even before carl jung or any other uh, great um, uh, psychologist and psychoanalyst came up with this idea uh, we had concepts like jagrat swapna sushupti turiya and turiyatita in our um, indian way of thinking in our indian way of thought so jagrat was a conscious or waking state where you are conscious of where you are and you are awake you are fully awake and you are conscious of whatever that is happening around you so usually we are all we all exist in a jagrat state then there is swapna which in which you are in a dreamy state or a dreaming state 
it is the interior psychic apparatus so in sopna you are in a dreaming state so in sushupti you are in deep sleep or unconscious so sushupti is akin to unconscious uh, swapna you can say it is akin to uh, pre conscious then you have in indian uh, thought processes and in indian philosophy you have thoughts like turiya and turiyatita turiya means it is a transpersonal super consciousness attained by yogis so you yogis are aware of their state of being as well as they are aware of the world and the brahman and the existence uh, of every uh, minute microcosm Uh, and microscopic thing in the universe so it is a transpersonal super consciousness attained by yogis turiya is a transpersonal super consciousness attained by yogis some yogis might be able to predict your future some yogis might be able to see through you and then they will, they might be able to see your past lives and the like they will be able to experience uh, more than one sense you know more than the beyond the sixth sense they ha- have a seventh sense that is because they uh, have a, a transpersonal super consciousness they are aware of themselves as well as they are aware of the duality they are aware of the brahman as well they are aware of their own souls and they are uh, they are aware, aware of atman which is their own soul and they are aware of the brahman which is the over soul that concept had uh, you know great influence on the western philosophy as well even t s eliot and even the transcendentalist uh, of american literature uh, they uh, were greatly influenced by this concept of turiya or transpersonal super consciousness which was attained by yogis then you have turiya tita which is again a highest state of consciousness so you might be familiar with uh dwayam dwayam means what uh, 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 an existence where things existed as two like i said atman and brahman so there is a binary between the mind and the uh, the soul and the over soul right atman atmavum brahman adayad devavum thammil or binary und adu poleyana turiyadeyile nammal parayana there is uh, but but in turiyada when you reach turiyada Uh, in the state of turiyada you reach the highest state of known uh, dual union with one's consciousness that is you are no longer separate atman and brahman are no longer separate and you become one with brahman so in such a state a yogi is go into samadhi they become one with their creator and they go into samadhi in turiyata state so even see they had indian roots jagrata swapna sushupti turiya and turiyatita are concepts that was that, that were there in india way before freud put forth this concept it was there um, in our archaic uh, scriptures it was there in our archaic scriptures and in those scriptures the consciousness and uh, the preconsciousness and the uh, preconscious or subconscious state and the unconscious state was dealt with in detail and we even talked about transpersonal super consciousness where we become aware of the atman as well as the brahman and uh, the world around us and then uh, finally when we are able to transcend even that when we are able to transcend the mind body dualism when we become one with the creator the yogis attain the highest state of consciousness which is turiyatita or in other words you can say that samadhi so this a concept of consciousness has roots in india that's what i wanted to say using this slide now moving on to our major uh, points which is the subject matter of surrealist poetry so surrealist poetry was a romantic reaction against the poetry of the 30s or the social poetry the surrealist poetry was a private poetry and not a social one so it was an intensely private affair they were writing about their own thoughts their mental processes that were there in their minds so surrealist poetry was a private poetry and it was not a social one 
surrealists did not concern themselves with the reality of the physical world but wanted to deal with the world lying beyond it in the hidden realm of unconscious so they they never wanted to deal the surrealist never wanted to deal with the physical world or the social world but they wanted to deal with the world lying beyond the hidden realm of the unconscious unconscious mind like hidden realm illulla aa oru world ne aanu avar explore cheyan shramichathu they expressed the memories of the conscious and subconscious mind they expressed the memories of the conscious and the subconscious mind um so they try to express the memories that were there in the sub their subconscious as well as their unconscious mind uh, you know you can rename it as subconscious as well as the unconscious mind now they exposed private chaos and individual hell so they try to expose the private chaos uh, that these individuals of the 1940s felt they were disillusioned with war they were disillusioned with the economy there were no jobs that were being created they were disillusioned with their life so it created a lot of private chaos in their minds and they were living their individual hell and they tried to express these chaos uh, and a disorderly state of mind chaos means a disorderly state they wanted to express this disorderly state of mind that they had and they wanted to express their individual hell they wanted to express the hell like existence that they had to deal with they wanted to express the hell like existence that they had to feel deal with in their um, unconscious mind is that clear now moving on to the next slide stylistic techniques uh, which was uh, that were adopted by the surrealist the surrealist opposed the poetry of clear statement and language they never wanted to express anything clearly they were highly ambiguous they wanted to write everything in an obscure fashion so they concentrated on writing poetry having no conscious design so they never had a conscious design or something it was like an automated writing automatic writing something comes into your mind you immediately writes it down something comes in your mind you immediately write it down so that is how they wrote they concept concentrated on writing poetry having no conscious design they never had a conscious design so my poetry should have a beginning middle and an end or my poetry should be written in blank verse or my poetry should rhyme with the or the words that i use the choice of diction um, the word should rhyme with the word that were there in the earlier stanza no such conscious decisions were made by them so they con- concentrated on writing poetry having no conscious design they wrote automatically without any inhibition or coherence imposed by conscious mind so they wrote automatic poetry uh, without any inhibition or coherence imposed by conscious mind the conscious mind would always want coherence right when you try to read something or when you are writing your answers for the exam and you are not able to express yourself well you at least try to read through it so that you would find some coherence uh, somewhere you know when correcting your papers i i find the i have the same di- dilemma because i try to find coherence somewhere there should be some kind of a cohesion or a connection and a beginning middle and end should be there right but um, the 40s poets wrote automatically so most of you are like the 40s poets they wrote automatically without any inhibition or coherence imposed by the conscious mind so the conscious mind never played a role in their poetry uh, so they never wrote poetry consciously they never wanted to rhyme their words they never wanted to write in a coherent manner whatever that came to their mind they wrote it obscurity and incoherence are the hallmarks of surrealist poetry obscurity means uh, something which is rendered unclear so uh, there was no clarity there was it was ambiguous ambiguity and incoherence incoherence means there is no cohesion uh, or there is no connection between the stanzas and incoherence uh, there is no cohesion between the stanzas and uh, obscurity ambiguity and incoherence are the hallmarks of surrealist poetry they used symbolism 
rich imagery and vocabulary so there is an abundant usage of symbolism i said they were poets of image rather than statement so they made use abundant use of symbolism rich imagery and vocabulary in their poetry